What's up everybody, Roskadamas here, and we're back with another Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced X episode. I am trying a different recording uh, audio setup, so let me know what you guys think of this in particular, or if you like the old one better. Uh, if this one works better, I'm going to try to use this from now on, but we'll, we'll see, I guess, at the end of this if I'm able to edit it correctly. Otherwise, you'll be hearing the old audio. So, coming into this one, we're doing a few side quests. I guess you could say. But when it comes down to this one, we're going to be doing uh, Wanted, which is not obviously one of the main storyline quests, so I guess you could say they're side quests. And uh, for this one, we're taking a look at our units here and figuring out who's mastered what so we can start changing out some of the weapons. And uh, as you can see, we've got Cure mastered, so take note of that and decide what we're going to replace that with. And that's uh, excellent because I need to start working out where to get a, a staff that gives revive so I can stop relying so heavily on my Phoenix Down because they're really expensive in this mod. So let's jump into the shop. And we have decent funds. But uh, now we're going to take a look and see if we want to pick Protect or I believe Shell. And I decide to take Protect. Uh, shell is good, but I find that more often than not, you're fighting melee combatants, as most monsters tend to be melee, at least early on. Uh, and then, immediately, I was faced with a mission after this where that is not the case, but that's a story for later, and it'll be an episode later. So, just taking a look here, trying to figure out uh, what other weapons... I always found it weird they gave you a gun at the beginning, considering, like, I've I never really used gunners in the base game. Uh, I might have to try it in this mod. And I think in the next patch for the mod, snipers are going to be able to use guns and all, all sorts of crazy shit like that. And then you're going to be able to get monsters as clan members and so I, <laughs> I'm going to have to play it again. I'm going to have to play it again. <laughs> then my microphone and my headset fell down. I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking mess. Alright. So like I said, we're doing Wanted on this one. Uh, and now we're in the shit. Because, at this point, it's been so long, I do not remember any of these missions now. So these are all free game, and I don't remember what I'm expecting, and I, I don't... Especially since this is modded, it, there could be totally different monsters than I remember, if I even remember. So, we'll go ahead and save, and then jump into it. This is where things are going to get very interesting, because... It's starting to be new for me now, even though I played this game for somewhere around 500 hours base game. It's not a perfect game, but I, I loved the hell out of this game, and that's why I'm here playing it again, except harder. And uh, I think it'd be interesting to play and see how many missions I can finish and, and have a good record of it, so we'll see. So, and here I almost forgot to give everybody their new shit, which would have been absolutely brilliant. We gave the trumpet to Mont Blanc so he has catnip. Interesting spell, fairly situational, it doesn't seem to hit any more reliably, or very little, um, with, with very little improvement compared to sheep count. So it's very situational, but there definitely has its uses, and you, you'll see those uses uh, in a coming episode. So with everybody kitted out, we're gonna jump into Wanted. And I do save again, apparently. You can never be too safe. I have had the mod crash on me once. And it was on the story mission. And I'll, I'll be sure to note that when I, we actually get there. Because I am also assisting in testing the mod. So, might as well assist in reporting the bugs. Now, I kind of agonized here on who I wanted to send in. And I see that knives is something we cannot use. But... It doesn't really affect our units as I don't have a thief yet, and I'm kind of upset I don't have a thief yet. I might actually change Yave into a thief, I've been thinking about it. And uh, at least get him some levels as a thief so I can see if I can branch him into maybe a ninja or just pick up some speed. Because uh, the soldiers don't generate speed very well as they level. They have fairly low speed growth. And uh, I... I can't really recommend keeping somebody a soldier the entire game, as it seems like they're usually outclassed 
in early mid game and, and farther, but you can definitely make use of their abilities and this mod might totally change things, so I could be speaking out of my ass. So I do choose to bring, I'm trying to master everybody's abilities on these side missions as grinding doesn't really help you, so I'm in it for the money and the items and trying to maximize everybody's uh, mastery of their abilities because in, in this mod everybody actually scales with your party. So you're not going to be able to grind your way past a point and then beat it because you're stronger. Which I like. I actually like it a lot. And then here's where I agonized. I thought maybe I could outfit Diesel here. And, uh... I thought about bringing him because I haven't used a Black Mage in a very long time. So I haven't really been able to appropriately test it with this new mod. And I do test it, uh, next mission. So... You won't have to wait that long. Was the next mission? Yeah, it was next mission. Yeah, so next mission you'll get to see it. And uh, they're a lot stronger than I remember. So, as far as that goes, I could just be totally ignorant as when I played this I was a lot younger. And I don't remember a lot of stuff. So, I do bring Lucas instead. As I kind of want to get him his two uh, white monk specializations so I can move him into Templar as I really liked the Templar, and I have a few plans for the Templar, and uh, I'll definitely be able to check and see if it's even a doable build anymore. And we're going after uh, Diog Halev. Halev. Diog Halev? I don't actually know how to pronounce that. I'm not going to pronounce that anymore. So let's kick it up, and their thief gets to go first. That's usual because he's uh, fairly fast. And they're, uh, they have an archer. Now, the thing about their archer is that she doesn't have block arrows. Mine does. Mine is able to counter snipe. So, that'll come into play a little bit later, but it, it doesn't make a huge difference. Now, jump on their dragoon is going to be annoying. So, I kind of want to lock him down. Now, this scares me. Steel armor, steel weapon. Fuck that. And because it's a steel skill, it doesn't count as using the dagger. Or knife, sorry, in knife in this case. Aim leg and aim arm is also annoying, but when it comes to using the knife, a steel ability does not count as using the knife, so keep that in mind. Uh, I, when I was playing this actual mission, I was a little bit on edge as to whether that was true or not, and it, it, it proves itself in the mission, so it's not a huge, uh, it's not a, it wasn't a huge deal, but it was aggravating and I got angry. And uh, you'll see where I got angry, uh, most likely, because I'll probably get angry at it again, even though I'm not playing anymore. Now, my first objective here was to pin the Dragoon to make sure that he didn't get to just jump at whatever he pleased. And uh, I noticed that the... Well, the Gladiator here and the Dragoon both have fairly low movement uh, distance, it seems. I, I seem to remember the Dragoon being able to move better than that, but it might just be down to uh, vertical movement. And I, I believe that to be true. So now we get to make use of our uh, newly picked up Protect. And I totally forgot that it was an AoE. I'm really happy that it's an AoE. I totally forgot. So now we get some of our uh, frontliners here buffed up so they can take a beating a little bit better. And then take our turns. So then, like every other mission I've done, speed break. Speed break everyone. Whenever I can. Even if they don't need it, I will go out of my way to speed break stuff, because I love being ahead in speed and turns, even when my units are relatively slow. So without a choice here, I had to attack from the front, and we do end up hitting, which is great. Now, Mont Blanc, he's a little bit tougher as an animist, but he's not really a frontliner, so I want to keep him safe while I use him for sleep. And we are lucky enough to get asleep right away. So, with that out of the way, I don't have to worry too much about the Dragoon for quite a while as he's speed broken and put to sleep. But we do have a problem when it comes to the Gladiator. He's the only one on our right flank. Uh, my whole goal was to kind of keep a front here near where this rock is so they can only approach me from two points. The two square points here. And one of them they just went ahead and blocked with their own Dragoon, so if I'm able to keep uh, Marsh or uh, Yave there on the edge, then 
I'll be able to actually pin them in that choke point, which is what I'm, I tried real hard to do, and I was able to accomplish to a degree. But you just witnessed uh, my thorn bow being used against me, essentially, and Yve can't move, which is really aggravating considering I want him to be able to speed break more shit. I also wanted to use him on his next turn to move and try to speed break the gladiator, but that's not going to happen, so he's stuck for now. And we have to just hope that he can become useful when he breaks free. So when it comes to it, I really wanted to figure out what I could do with Lucas here, but there's nowhere I can move him that would be useful, so I'm going to use him to bind up the choke point. Now, at this point I was unsure if Knives counted for his steel abilities. I was still kind of assuming that they didn't, so I'm trying to lock him down. Now in reality, they uh, do not, so I was right to think so. Uh, but as he went along, he behaved kind of oddly, and I thought that he would beeline for me and try to start using steel abilities, but he, he didn't, and it confused the shit out of me. So I kind of let my guard down and thought, okay, maybe he can't use it, maybe it counts as knives. Yeah, no, no, that's not the case. And I'm already getting angry thinking about it, I'm not even playing the damn thing. But yeah, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. So now, since he's asleep, I do turn my back on him so I can face the gladiator who's going to get a turn before Yuvei can move out of there. Now, my ultimate choice here is lock up this point, which I choose to do, or go after the gladiator, but I can only attack from the front, which is unreliable in almost every form. If you don't have a choice and you have no better move, might as well try, but... Now see here, here's where he moves away. I don't, I don't know if it's because the AI is just that much smarter than I remember, but he doesn't move forward and try to steal anything or attack anyone. Obviously, he shouldn't be trying to attack anyone as he's using knives, but I thought he would move past uh, where the Dragoon is because I left a spot open. So, and I, I do... I do decide to try to put the Gladiator to sleep, but I'm trying to figure out who's going to get what turn first so I don't leave anybody exposed. Checking his movement range. There's no way to really get out of his movement range, and he's going to attack uh, Yve's flank. So I decide to block up the choke point, and try to put him to sleep. Measuring my options to try to figure out what my best sleep option would be. And I decide that I do want to go for the gladiator, instead of the uh, thief. And we missed. But, now the side target is Mont Block. Which I don't think is a better target because Yve is a lot tougher. But you could see it doesn't matter. Because holy shit, Mont Blanc did something right. I shouldn't talk shit. He's been doing a, a lot right lately. And then Yve dodges the arrow. Even though he can't move his leg, it doesn't matter. He doesn't need his damn leg. He's gonna dodge it anyway. Now here's where I thought that I read that it had strike back and it scared the shit out of me. Uh, but I'm glad I was wrong. It's actually Last Berserk. So I do want to be careful of that, because he's going to get a large attack boost when he goes crit. So as we check the turn order, I try to figure out, can I kill him before he gets another turn in his Berserk state? So I decide, yeah, let's go for it. And Lucas leveled up. And we lose protection on Yve. I, be I believe protection is a two turn. Could be a three turn. Uh, again, speed break, screwing with my sense of time. And we don't have enough mana to use aim leg. So I get to just shoot at somebody and wait for some mana. Which isn't ideal, but if you want to get anything done, you have to at least try to hit stuff with things, even if they're going to miss sometimes. So, you're going to be out of mana occasionally. Now, I would recommend not taking a shot you don't have to take if you think you're going to get a better shot at putting something down or putting something under control-wise. But that's just something that's down to the situation and to the individual player. So I can't really be the, uh, the sayer of all in that situation. And I've made plenty of mistakes when it comes to that situation. In a lot of instances, I've taken a shot trying to pin something down that it wasn't really necessary to pin down. Whether I hit it or not, it, it wasn't super necessary. Uh, and it probably would have been better suited to save for a better angle and a better chance to hit. Though sometimes you don't have a choice. 
So now I'm trying to figure out where I can move Marsh to make him useful without putting him in the line of fire of everyone else, or leaving him exposed at the very least. And there's just no way for me to actually get him close enough to attack anything. So I decided to just kind of lock up here so when the thief gets his turn, he doesn't get to walk in on the flank of Mont Blanc. And uh, instead, he has to walk all the way around and, and get no action other than movement that turn. Now, here's something really aggravating. This guy, our, uh, our target, he has poison. Now, immediately, that's not super annoying, but when it comes to it, and when everybody is poisoned, it gets pretty goddamn annoying. And uh, poison does a, a decent amount of damage. On softer targets, it's more dangerous, but on, like, uh, fighters and soldiers and whatnot, it didn't seem to matter all that much for Marsh or Yave. Now, we're going to take our turn here to speed break and try to slow down the gladiator so we can kill him before he berserks. Same plan, stick it to it. And as far as I'm aware... Well, as far as I'm aware, there wasn't a whole lot we could have done there as he ends up getting another turn. I'm not entirely sure if it would have mattered if I had struck him with Yave instead or if I had decided to uh, just speed break him. But I do try to put him to sleep, and we are able to. So when it comes down to it, we have two enemies asleep, uh, none of which are hurt very badly. But as you can see, I take 10 damage there with, with poison. And uh, that's pretty screwed up on a unit that only has 52 health. Uh, especially since she's already squishy and dies constantly. Uh, right now, we haven't been able to do a whole lot of damage. We've only struck at the Gladiator decisively. We haven't done anything but lock down and try to create a choke point. It's been slow going so far, and we haven't made a lot of progress. Uh, and I'm a little afraid that we might lose an attrition war here if I can't keep my control units up. And again, I cannot hit the goddamn thief. My headset fell down again. I need a new headset. Obviously, that's not what I'm recording on, otherwise you'd be hearing all of that a lot more clearly. But that's neither here nor there. So we're going to bolster our front and try to keep the choke point locked down because I need them to stay away from my healer and I need them to stay away from Mont Blanc specifically because those are my two most reliable uh, anti-attrition units. If I can put people to sleep, there's less shit attacking me. If I can heal my guys, there's less of my guys dying to chip damage. Now checking movement again. Trying to determine what we're going to do and what units I can move without exposing my uh, support units in the back. So I do decide that we can go for the Gladiator again, and I can attack him from the front since he's asleep, 100% chance to hit. And I'd rather use the other chances to hit to go for the rear. But unfortunately, he gets to turn right away. And that's the problem, because he goes right after Colette. But she dodges it. Really lucked out on that one. And uh, here's where blocked arrows, or blocked arrows, yeah, there's a blocked arrow, but block arrows comes in handy. Now we're going to move and try to finish off the gladiator. And we do. Now we're starting to make some progress. And uh, there's that turn order you got to watch for. He actually got his... Uh, turn right after he berserked because I woke him up as his turn was coming up and I don't know uh, personally if there's a way to tell if they're go they're going to get a turn if you wake them up while they're asleep I think it's just down to trying to time it in your head yourself and you can see we all just got fucking poisoned more of an annoyance than anything else but if I'm able to keep my units together healing won't be a problem and because I'm trying to hold this choke incidentally uh, they're all together and they're going to remain together for the foreseeable future in the uh, the later in ends of the fight we do spread out, but for here, this, this is okay. This is okay that they're poisoned as long as I'm protecting the squishier ones and healing my front line. Now I'm trying to decide who's the best target for my shot here. And I fucked up because they're elevated and it was a it was a long angle shot. And it seems like when the enemy is elevated above your archer at a long angle shot, one that you're not that's flying more of a uh, 
horizontal path and less of a vertical path, you're going to miss every time because it falls short. I don't know the actual uh, geometry for that, but it seems that that's happened to me every time. So you either need to coax her into throwing a vertical shot or be on the same level or above. And now he does use steel here, which tells me, yes, you can do that. And that scared me a little bit, and I thought, okay, kill that. Kill that goddamn yesterday. Hurry up and kill that, because he's got steel weapon and steel armor, and I do not have the money to pay for this shit. I don't even want him stealing my money. And it... You're gonna see why I got angry in a second, but I won't, I won't ruin it. I won't ruin the surprise, so I'll just let this play out. But he's a... He's a wily little motherfucker. He's dodging shit all over the place. I wasn't able to take him out in a whole slew of my turn. Of everybody focused on it. It, it was... One of the most aggravating things I think I've had in quite a while. Now, I do attempt to uh, immobilize our Dragoon here because uh, he'll be coming out pretty soon. And since he's asleep, it's not really much of an attempt. And we want to get the Archer to safety. Uh, the problem being, though, I don't want the goddamn Thief to be able to move, so I want to keep him pinned. Because I don't want him getting any back shots in anybody, I don't want him being able to get almost guaranteed steals or anything like that. So, I end up just doing the safe thing, potion, and face him. Now here's where the aggravation starts. I do speed break him, in an attempt to keep his uh, turns more reasonable, as he is a very fast unit. And we do have to face down one more poison here before we can start spreading out. We get a little bit of uh, RNG favor, or RNGesus, praised be his name. We are able to uh, avoid all of that poison, even though one of the units that they were focusing on was already poisoned. We do keep our healer from having to heal himself and waste mana and whatnot, so he can just focus on keeping the rest of the team alive. Now, what do we do with Mont Blanc? My general purpose for Mont Blanc is he can't really deal any physical damage, so he needs to be used as pure support. So I try to reset enemy turns using him, or lock down units and then refocus efforts. And uh, I actually thought about using Catnip to force him to not steal shit, and actually force him to use his dagger, which is a situation that is uh, actually very useful considering it's illegal. But there's no way for me to actually get to him, so I don't really have much of an option. So I do decide to try to put our target down. I'm going to keep calling him our target because I cannot pronounce his name. And we end up putting him to sleep. And I'm probably embarrassing myself just trying to pronounce his name, so I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, from now on I'll refer to him as the, uh, the suspect. And he stole our fucking armor! Ugh! Sorry, it made me angry. It made me angry still. That's what I was talking about. And then immediately following that, he turns into Neo. The son of a bitch. I... At this point, I was incredibly angry, because I don't have a lot of money to be spending on buying shit I already owned. And it's... He already stole some damn money, and then he stole the fucking caress that we had on Marsh. I and then he fucking dodges everything. He dodges everything. I uh, I can't I can't even believe it. He's just so masterful. And then we get like our lower hit guy to hit him, our uh, lower attack damage guy to hit him. Uh, okay, well, well uh, so angry, just. Alright, let it go. It's already happened. This is the video afterwards. It's fine. Let's just heal everybody up. Get some damn turns. Kill Neo. And then get on with our lives and bring in the suspect. That's why we're here after all. Bring in the suspect. Now you could ignore everything that's going on right now and just try to bring down the suspect. And 
the mission would be over. He's the direct target. But I, I want to farm some XP, get some levels, and uh, I don't feel comfortable letting the enemy run around while I try to focus down the single target. Though I believe it's actually possible. I don't think this is the definitive strategy. And I do use combo, because I'm sick of this. Now, in this situation, we have two enemies down and no, none of our units have fallen yet. Which is a great position to be in, considering that their remaining units are a... I would say a, maybe an alchemist I would classify him as, since he's using poison and he has a... I think it's rasp? He uses rasp later on. He's not really a huge threat as I'm not using a lot of casters and I have a healer active and alive. So his poison's not a huge threat. And then the other target is an archer. The archer being not really that scary, considering it doesn't do a whole lot of damage and I can heal through it. It's really just attrition type damage and, and chip damage. Now the big thing is the dragoon, but he is pinned to the ground right now. So my goal is to force the archer to focus on my tougher units as it's obviously very little damage to them and they can shake it off with a little bit of healing from Darcy and to kill this dragoon before he comes out of being pinned. Now, when it comes to killing him, you have to get within range, obviously, as most of my units are melee. So I'll have to get close to him to knock him out. But I'm hoping that my uh, speed advantage, because he's been speed broken, will allow me to do so without him being able to retaliate effectively. Now, for the archer, the archer is going to be moving away constantly. Thanks a lot, Judge. You asshole. He moved Neo in the way, so I only have one angle of attack right now on the Dragoon. So now I have to flank around the suspect to hit the Dragoon from the rear. And I do send Lucas forward to start picking away at the Archer, as she'll need to keep moving away to deal with it. And I'm not really sure why she wanted to shoot at Mont Blanc here. There seem to be better targets. But I'm using Mont Blanc kind of as a, a draw and a flanking unit on the opposite side, so the enemy is less likely to move the archer over there and be aggravating altogether. And here's where I really, really wish that uh, they haven't moved the thief in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and speed break the suspect as I, he has not been speed broken yet. Try to prolong his uh, sleep state. And then make a movement with the archer and try to bring down this Dragoon. And we did it. I think that is the first time she's killed anybody. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the first time she's killed somebody. So now, automatically, she is a hardened mercenary and will make the greatest sniper of all time. Calling it. Calling it right now. Now, same idea. Same process. Keep everybody healed up because of the damn poison. And we've pretty much got this at this point. Uh, the only thing I think that could go horribly wrong is if I just ignored the poison and ran around like an idiot for the foreseeable future, maybe five, six turns, and just let poison whittle my guys away, and then just ignore the archer, let the archer pick two. But it, that's obviously not going to happen. At, at this point, the heavy hitters are dead, the dangerous units are dead. The uh, I do try to hit the archer here with, with uh, sleep, but it's not really necessary. The... Uh, Real threat is really just the archer, considering what's available to our uh, our suspect here. And that dodge is just aggravating. Nothing more, nothing less. And she does go for another immobilize on Yuvay. I don't know why she's picking on him. But she misses. And uh, by this point, he's a little upset. I would be too. Somebody shot me in the goddamn leg. At the beginning of the match, and I had to stand around, and I'm also poisoned, so I feel like shit. Are you kidding me? I'd be pissed. So we're going to move the archer up and do a little counter sniping. Not a huge deal, but... I do decide to go for the leg. Because he'll be coming out very soon, and if he's pinned, he doesn't have a lot of choice for abilities. Um, I played it a little safer than I think I needed to when it came to him. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of abilities that can do a lot to me. He just has the poison and rasp. He doesn't ever use anything else. 
It was, uh, it was actually odd. I expected him to be a little more dangerous. And here's Rasp. This doesn't even matter at this point when it comes to my uh, soldiers, or my archer, or my white monk. It, it doesn't even matter. He's already in a position that I want him to be in, and it would only be a minor inconvenience to not be able to speed break him again, even though he's already speed broken. So, as far as that goes, the only real threat he poses is if he can keep my healer's mana zeroed out and let poison eat away at him. Oh, now you move him. Thanks, Judge. Thanks, Yago. You go over there. God, fuck, it's Judges. It's Judges. I don't know what their problem is. It's, it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy, I tell you. You just watch. Just watch. You'll see. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Oh, this guy's still alive. Alright, so at this point... He's basically just... You could literally just do the rest of the commentary here shouting, stop resisting, because that's essentially what's going on here. Uh, we, we have to pin him down and uh, take him into custody, and he's resisting arrest. So, basically, just fill in the rest of the commentary with all of our guys yelling, stop resisting. Every time they attack him, just yell in your head, stop resisting. Slowly whittle him down until he can't fight back anymore, and then we'll bring him in. And all he's really using is Rasp, which I don't know what that would be equivalent to in the real world. I don't know, yelling obscenities? Maybe, since we don't really have mana. I guess it would like... Oh, she got a critical, I don't remember that. Damn, see, what, what, did I, what did I say? What did I say? Hardened Mercenary, best sniper ever now. I'm calling it and it's true. I think that... There we are. Now we'll bring him into custody. Now he spouts some crazy hopped up drug addict shit. There you go. And we got him. Overall, this mission wasn't too difficult, uh, especially since we were able to keep him in a choke point. It, it really made it a lot easier. But with that, we did get a wizard's hat, and that's going to play uh, into the next couple of missions quite uh, handily. And with that, that'll pretty much do it for us for this episode. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.